My wife survived cancer and asked for a hall pass. My wife and I have been married since 2001 and together since 1999. She is the most intelligent, thoughtful, caring, loyal person I know, and I have always thought of myself as fortunate to have met and married her. She is, even today, aesthetically beautiful and men have told her this throughout our marriage. She has always shot them down. Earlier this year, she was diagnosed with uterine cancer, stage 1 and had a full hysterectomy. I was never concerned about the cancer, it was diagnosed early, dealt with quickly and she made a full recovery. I took time off work to look after her after the surgery and all seemed well. There were some to be expected emotional instances on her part and although I am not an emotional person, we dealt with them together. After her recover, she was insistent that we start living life to the fullest and took a 10-day trip to Europe, followed by a trip to Belize. We also have a trip to the UK and Spain, Portugal later this year. I am fine with these things, building memories and crossing bucket list adventures off her, our list. I also understand that these are a result of feeling fragile on her part. She also took up yoga, swimming and healthy cooking classes. I was fully on board until last week. Last week she came home from work and told me she wanted a hall pass, a one-time opportunity for her to have sex with someone else besides me. She said that since her cancer diagnosis her outlook on life has changed and she doesn't want to be handcuffed from doing things she wants to. She explained that there is this guy at her work that she has always had some attraction to. He is leaving the company and she will never see him again, so this is the perfect opportunity to sleep with someone else. She said that I could say no of course but that she would be mad, disappointed at me for an indeterminate amount of time and that it would be confirmation of my male toxicity and insecurity. I don't consider myself to be toxic and if not wanting your wife of 20 plus years to have sex with someone else is insecure then I guess I am insecure. I told her that I appreciated her talking to me about this but approval via coercion is not approval. I also said that I do not appreciate her language in describing my, as of yet, unknown reaction to this very large issue that could affect the rest of our marriage, life. I got up in the morning she basically said that she was sorry for putting such a large decision solely on my shoulders and that to help she was taking the decision away from me. She booked a hotel near where her co-workers are having a party, send off for this guy and she would spend the night there, with him and hope that I would be here when she got back that she would answer any questions I have about the night after it happened but not before. She will not tell me who he is or anything about him because she knows me too well, and that I will dwell and obsess over him and that would make it too real for me which is pretty accurate. Her POV is that the less I know the better which contradicts the offer to tell me anything I want to know after it happened. I think she knows I want one to know, ask anything or she simply will not tell me. Part of me thinks, at least she has been honest with me and she has been through a lot since finding out she had cancer so maybe I should just let it happen. I certainly have no concept of what she went through so I cannot dismiss how this affected her mental state, outlook on life. Part of me wants to put my foot down and say this is not going to happen and deal with those consequences when they happen. Her BFF called me callous for even suggesting that I wouldn't let it happen, because I have no idea what she went through. I find it hard to believe that she is okay with the possibility of throwing away 20 plus years of marriage over some guy that she has had no relationship with outside of work and that I should just call her bluff. Maybe she thinks similarly that I won't throw away the marriage because of one encounter. I just don't know what to do. I empathize with her and then an instant later I am angry with her. Part of me wants to know who this guy is. What does he look like? What has he got that is so enthralling for her? Is he just a safe option? Is he married? Does his wife know? Would I be a callous asshole for saying no? What can I do besides walking away? Top commenter 1. Kinda think this is the way your marriage will be from now on. With her epiphany, she wants to relive her life and she is going to do it regardless of your feelings. I think she is being rather selfish and probably only threatens this because she thinks you are beaten down and will simply put up with it. Perhaps not the best time for trips and frills. She wants the single life let her see what that means. Opus replies to some comments. She thinks because she will never see this guy again and that I have never met him that it won't really affect me or our marriage in the long term. I am left with accepting it and never viewing her the same way again or going through a divorce at 54. Not really great options on either front. I don't know where her head is in the bout with cancer is affecting her in ways that I couldn't possibly imagine. I don't think she believes I will leave. I received a ton of advice that I couldn't possibly respond to. It has been an exhausting couple of days. I was hoping that my opposition to her plans would give her pause, but unfortunately that did not happen. I said I am a hard no, and I am not sure how I will feel about you if you go ahead with it. I was met once again with this is for me, it will be one time. What can I say to help you deal with it? 
you'll get over it, we were meant to be regardless of the situation remarks leading up to Sarai. She left Sarai ostensibly to meet her co-workers, but in reality fuck the guy. I asked her to text me when she was leaving for the bar and when she did I asked her if she was really going to go through with this. After her response I am not answering any more questions tonight, I will see you tomorrow. I blocked my wife, then I did something either stupid or brilliant. I went to the bar where the get together was happening. Well not the bar but a transit bench across the street. I waited for a long time. It was running through my mind the leading up to this event, that I need to know who this guy was, maybe to compare myself against him, to see what he had that I do not. It was driving me crazy not knowing who he was and what was so special about him that she would ruin a marriage for. After what seemed like eternity, a woman that I recognized from my wife's office left the bar and got in a cab. Soon other people started filing out and a whole group came out and people were hugging a man and shaking his hand. I assumed that I had my guy. I didn't see my wife and had a brief thought that maybe she called it all off. I unblocked her and there were no messages. Everyone said their goodbyes and left. Dude was standing outside for a few minutes and then my wife came out. She looked around, took his hand and started walking away together. Of all the emotions I went through, trepidation, sadness, anger, it was disgust that really encapsulated the event for me. This guy was short, fat, and bald, all the things I cannot compete with. Ultimately, I felt like a pervert for watching from a distance. I followed until they got to the hotel, and then turned around and went home. I woke up Sunday morning and put a lock on the master bedroom door. I moved her things to the spare room and left a note asking her to find other accommodations as quickly as possible. I visited another friend who is a lawyer and he gave me some sage advice and a couple of recommendations for divorce attorneys and made the introductions. My wife had been calling me numerous times since around 11 or so. Once blocked the calls go to voicemail. I listened to the first couple but felt nothing but some satisfaction when she couldn't get through to me and she was obviously becoming concerned. I didn't want to go home but I left in such a hurry that I didn't plan an overnight properly. I got home around 9 and as per my buddy's advice, I recorded the interaction. I was halfway up the stairs when she came up from the family room asking what was going on. Could we talk? I thought we talked about this. I just answered with I am not interested in discussing this tonight and went to bed. After not getting a response from me through the door she left me alone. I feel kind of like a child for not talking with her and shutting the door on her but I just couldn't look at her. Monday I got up and ready for work. She was waiting for me and asked if we could discuss getting back to normal. I said, you have been doing all the talking for the both of us for the last week, why don't you continue and left for work? I have an appointment with the attorneys my friend recommended for this week. TLDR, she went ahead with it. I am actually more disgusted by who she chose than the sex itself, if that makes any sense. I asked her to find somewhere else to live. Top commenter 2. I can only hope that you've decided to do what's best for you. At the end of the day you're the one that has to live with your decisions. From your previous post it's obvious that your wife, and I use that term merely as a placeholder, has made her decision. I know that having something that has been such a huge part of your life end can be daunting, but sometimes it's for the best. Commenter 3. The BFF does not have your best interests in mind. The BFF wants to validate their bad choices by encouraging you to make the same ones. The BFF lives for the drama they help create. The BFF is titillated by the details. The BFF cultivates misery. The BFF is a narcissist who can't help themselves. So if the statement, just go for it, you deserve it. He doesn't appreciate you. He doesn't respect you. And in my case, you faced your own mortality and you shouldn't let anyone hold you back from doing the things that make you happy. Maybe realize that you should talk with your significant other and explain what you are feeling. You owe it to them to discuss the way you're feeling about yourself, your partner and your marriage. Comments from Opus Yeah, once the dust settled I realized that I was desperate to hold on to something that no longer existed. I have initiated divorce proceedings. She has regret, not remorse. Of course those are different things with different meanings. She regrets what has happened because her life is upside down now. Someone in a private message asked if her cancer could be back and spread to her brain which I don't know if it has actually happened or not. But I doubt it would make any difference to me at this point. I just don't see her the same way anymore. I told all her friends' husbands about how they enabled this behavior, and the fallout is interesting. I said that maybe they are covering for one another, that maybe my wife was just the next link in the chain. This got them going through their wives' phones. A couple found inappropriate sexting. All husbands have made their wives cut off my wife. My lawyer wasn't available for a few days, so I was faced with the reality of having to live with my wife in the interim. I really didn't want to go home and have any discussion, let alone a discussion about our relationship. 
When I did get home I was basically ambushed by her friends and my mother-in-law. Instead of taking the remorseful approach they decided that a full court press was what the situation warranted and I was basically berated by them. The BFF was definitely the ringleader, but all of them decided to say such things as, she's been through a lot, you don't know what she's been through, you have no idea what it is like to face something like this, this was a one-time thing, at least she told you she could have hidden it from you, she will never see the guy again. And my favorite, you are an asshole for what you have been putting her through these last couple of days. I listened with a dumbass smirk on my face and when there was a lull in their fury, I asked if they were all done now. Then I asked my wife if there was anyone in her circle of friends or anyone else that she forgot to tell about this. I quietly informed all of them that I was going to sit down with their husbands and tell them about how they verbally abusing me, shaming me and trying to coerce me into staying with a cheater. After I told them to leave, I said that I had no say in entire event and so they have no say in whether I stay or not. My STBXW sort of apologized. She said that she regretted the entire thing. I said there is a difference between regret and remorse. You regret what happened because of the cause and effect. You have regret because your life will never be the same. Our relationship will never be the same because you are wholly and willfully unconcerned about me and what I wanted. She asked if I had any questions that she would answer them now, no matter how disturbing. I said that the one question I do have is why. Not necessarily why this guy, why this low-end unattractive, unfit guy. But why someone else in the first place? She said that the cancer scared her to her core. She felt like she was rushing toward mortality and stepping out of that tunnel was appealing. She said that after all this time of being a wife and mother and worrying about family, this was something just for her. An escape. The guy was just someone who was interested in her for a long time. She knew wouldn't say no and was completely opposite to me. I said if I was going to risk my marriage, the woman would have to be a serious upgrade from you. I told her that I saw you and him coming out of the bar that night. I watched you walk away from the bar hand in hand towards the hotel. I said that you looked too familiar with each other and asked if there was something going on before all this. She said no but who knows if that is the truth or not. I said that after all our years together, your lack of respect for me was astonishing. I finished by saying that I would never be able to look at myself in the mirror again if I condoned that level of disrespect and stayed with you. I said I hope we can go our separate ways amicably and that I have an appointment with a lawyer later in the week. I again asked her to find some other accommodations and she simply said, I am not going anywhere. We are not getting a divorce. I will give you all the time you need and do whatever you need to recover from this. We will get past this. She has asked me to go to marriage counseling, which I refused. Why would I go to counseling? I did nothing to warrant needing a therapist's advice. I had her served and gave her a notice to vacate. She has moved in with her mom but I find her constantly coming by to see if I need anything or making suggestions like what if we had an open relationship only on your side or threesomes, which seems kind of desperate and pathetic. Rebuffing her constantly and telling her she has to call to ask permission before coming by and finally seems to getting through to her that there will be no us going forward. She has said that she will drag the divorce out for as long as possible, but so far has been compliant. The worst part of all this is telling my daughter that we are getting a divorce and why, followed closely by her begging me to give her mom another chance. I am not sure I would have been afforded the same consideration if I was the one who was cheating. TLDR, a lot of unkind things were said but she has been served and has moved out. Divorce is next with me hoping mediation is reasonable and I don't get screwed in the end. A few comments from Opus, on his daughter, I think it was just a gut reaction. In the weeks that have passed, and the more she understands what has happened, the more irritated she is becoming with her mom. On his wife, I loved my wife, I, and others, found her to be stunning. Now, knowing that she affaired down so low makes her a non-entity that I could never look at the same way again. No amount of counseling is going to change the way I see her. Some Q&A. First question, something had to transpire prior to her hotel excursion. There's no way she decided in a matter of a few days to pick and cheat with AP. Response, getting sex is easier for women. Maybe they were involved in a E before and this was a culmination. I don't really know nor do I care, unless it benefits me during the divorce. From what I know all of her friends have cut her off. They are trying like hell to save their own marriages that they are turning on each other. Second question, after vacating your house, is she feeling any remorse? Or is she still thinking you need to get over it as of today? Going NC with WW should be easy since daughter is an adult. What desperate measures has she taken that you haven't mentioned in your post and comments? Response. She was stoic and held her position right up until she was served. Then she became visibly upset and resorted to begging, pleading and bargaining. 
Response from commenter, really, no tears, no emotional meltdown, I am sorry that happened to you, how can she not see what she has done to you? The whole way this went is so surreal, from start to finish, it is like she has a manic or hypomanic episode. You are doing the right thing by divorcing her. Sorry, but there is no love in her anymore. You, sir, have not lost your self-respect and have made the right choice. Take care of yourself. Response from Opus. Plenty of tears, begging and bargaining after the fact, but that may be just optics. Maybe she fell out of love and now is regretting her new station in life. She's an attractive woman. She will have plenty of men willing to date her, but I won't be one of them. Last response from commenters. If you ever feel the need to go nuclear, you could reveal the affair to her co-workers. I bet that would be a disaster. Opus's final response. I want her employed so I don't have to pay maintenance even if it was while she was between jobs. There is a woman at her work who has always looked at me in an inviting way so maybe I will try to date her after this is over. That would be interesting on a couple of levels. The 12th of September 2023. There is not much to report. We are in the process of getting a divorce, however where we live, we must be legally separated for one year. My STBXW has said that she will give me whatever I want in the divorce if I agree to attend marriage counseling, but I am not interested. There was a bit of back and forth while we worked out what separation looks like in everyday life from this point forward. As a result, we have only just agreed to the confines of the legal separation. So as we move towards defining the divorce language, maybe my stance may change. The house was a premarital asset, so she has no claim to it. The only things she could go after are my pension, vehicles and vacation property, but I would counter that she has lived rent-free for 20 plus years and has her own money plus inheritance from her father. I may have offered a top-up in retirement as she was a stay-at-home mom while our daughter was young but that would be the most at this point. I received a lot of messages about her friend group and my daughter, so I will clear up in misconceptions now. My daughter isn't taking her mother's side. She has always been a mama's girl but she is very unhappy with her mom right now. Her initial reaction was just shock and held out hope that we would work through any issues and stay together. Now she accepts that is not going to happen she has been limiting her interactions with her, but at the end of the day, she is still her mom. The friend group husbands were upset at the level of complicity of their wives in aiding and abetting the contact, cheating and made them cut off my wife, but that seems to have been forgotten at this point. The BFF was the ringleader and seems to have taken perverse pleasure in actively creating scenarios where they would be in contact, at the very least encouraging to the point of causing her husband to question her motives. It turns out she didn't like me at all and this was her way of sticking it to me. I guess she wins. The BFF's husband said that there were some sexting in his wife's messages but said he is dealing with it. We did meet up with him being apologetic for his wife's complicity, but it is not his fault and just want to move on. I have decided not to date anyone for a while. I will not be getting married ever again. So that is it. I doubt I will post again unless she wins the lottery and I find it my heart to forgive her.